Welcome to our tutorial about creating a rectangular pattern. I've split this chapter into two videos. For a basic overview of the rectangular pattern tool, please see volume one of this course. Here we're going to use the rectangular pattern tool in more depth. Let's begin by creating a sketch. We'll need a rectangle somewhere here. Let's add a three point arc. Here's the first point the second point, and point number three. The three-point arc tool is still active. Let's create another arc. The tangency symbol appears between the arcs. Let's right-click and done. Now I'm going to select this line and convert it to construction geometry. Next, let's select the coincident constraint. Select this point and this line. Since we have a tangency constraint between the arcs, the second arc adjusted as well. Right click, done. Now let's apply some dimensions. Activate the dimension tool. 1.5 inches. OK. And the second dimension. Let's make it 3 inches. OK. By the way, if the Edit Dimension dialog window doesn't appear when you create a dimension, go to Application Options and the Sketch tab. You need to enable Edit Dimension when created. OK, let's cancel out of this dialog window. And back to the Sketch tab. We see in our status bar that two more dimensions are needed here. Let's use a coincident constraint between this point and the center point. Right click, Done. Now I've got a fully constrained sketch. Let's exit the sketch, finish sketch, over to the extrude command. The profile is automatically pre-selected. Extents, let's enter a distance value of an eighth of an inch, 0.125. OK. Next, I'm going to create a rectangular hole. Right click and new sketch. Let's drop a line between the center of the arcs. Right click, done. Activate the rectangle tool. And let's place our rectangle right about here. Right click, done. Let's convert our new line to construction geometry. And let's dimension the rectangle. We'll make this dimension an eighth of an inch, 0.125. OK. Let's make the second dimension 3 eighths of an inch. 0.375, OK. And let's apply a coincident constraint between this point and this construction line. Right click, done. We need one more line here. Activate the line tool. Right click, done. Let's convert this to construction geometry. Add one more dimension between this point and, oops, I need a point here. Let's add a point. There we go. OK, let's apply some dimensions between this point and the center of our rectangle. Let's make this distance 0.9531. OK, our sketch is fully constrained. Let's exit the sketch, finish sketch, activate the extrude command now. For the profile to select, let's get our rectangle. Cut. Extents. Let's use All. Click OK. Now let's activate the Rectangular Pattern Tool. Let's select a feature, Extrusion 2. Direction. We'll select this edge. We can reverse the direction if needed by clicking that icon. I want to orient my pattern along this line. Let's select direction 1. Number of instances, I'll use 5. Now let's look at some of the different options on this window for distributing our pattern along this line. Currently, we've got spacing selected with a value of 1 inch. This means that each instance is going to be 1 inch apart along this line. 
Let's take a look at the next option, distance. And here we need to enter a value. Let's put 4 inches. The last option is curve length. Now you see that the value box is grayed out. The length displayed there, 4.712, is the actual length of that curve. If we go back to distance, we're able to make an entry in this value box. Let's say that I want to place five instances along that value. I can enter a formula. Enter the divide symbol, and 4. Basically, we've got five instances, but four spaces between them. Let's remember that value now, 4.712, and let's click OK. Now let's say I want to use the same feature, and I'm going to create a pattern along a different edge, let's say down this edge. Activate the Rectangular Pattern tool. Now select the feature, Extrusion 2. Direction, we'll use this edge this time. Let's click these arrows to expand the rectangular pattern window. Under orientation, let's choose direction 1. Number of instances, let's use 5 again. We'll use the same spacing as in the previous example, 4.712, divided by 4. Well, as you can see down below, we obviously have a problem. In addition to the fact that the pattern goes off the edge of the plate, the distance between the instances is larger than in our previous example. The reason for this is pretty simple. The instance is further from the center of our new circular edge than the source was from the center of the previous circular edge. If we want the pattern to match up, we're going to need to do it a little differently. Let's cancel out of the rectangular pattern tool. Let's say I want to create four more instances of this hole distributed here at an angular distance of 90 degrees. Let's begin by creating another sketch. Right click, New Sketch. We'll start by creating a couple of construction lines. Here to this point, from this point to this point. Right click and done. Actually, let's create one more construction line from this corner to this corner. Right click, done. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's activate the three point arc tool. We'll select this point and a point somewhere along the construction line. Let's drop it right there. Right click, done. We'll apply a coincident relation this point and this point. Right click, done. Let's create a second arc now. First point, second point. Point number three, right click and done. And let's add a coincident relation between this point and this point. Right click, done. As you can see in the status bar, the sketch is fully defined, so let's click Finish Sketch. Now let's delete this rectangular pattern. Right click and delete. Let's activate the rectangular pattern tool again. The first thing to do, our feature to pattern. Direction 1, this sketch, expand. Orientation, direction 1. We want five instances. Let's choose curve length. Distribute it along this arc. As you can see, the length of the arc is 2.994 inches. Let's remember this number and click OK. Now right click. Let's bring in Sketch 3. Right click, Visibility. And let's activate the Rectangular Pattern tool again. Select the same feature. Direction 1, this line. Orientation, Direction 1. Number of instances, 5. And distribute it along the length of this curve. Okay, not bad. The distribution is a lot more even than in our previous example. But we still do have a problem because the curve length we used previously was 2.994, and here we can see that the length of this curve is 3.215. Let's click OK. Let's see how we can solve this problem and make both of these arcs equal in length. 
In order to do so, we're going to need to refresh some of our basic geometry. We'll be using a formula. The circumference of a circle is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. Since the first arc, in our case, is 180 degrees, and the second arc is 90 degrees, the first circumference is equal to the second circumference, as I've represented in my formula on our workspace. Since pi is a constant in our equation, the radius of the first arc equals the radius of the second arc divided by 2. Since the distance between these two points is 3, it means the first arc has a radius of 1 inch, and the second arc needs to have a 2 inch radius. Geometry and algebra, folks. Let's go back to extrusion 2, double click on sketch 2. Let's change this distance. Enter 1 inch. OK. Finish sketch. Now let's go to check pattern 1. The length of our curve displays as 3.142. OK. Let's check the second rectangular pattern now. Again, same thing. 3.142 inches. And this concludes our first tutorial on the rectangular pattern tool. In our next chapter on this tool, we're going to be covering some of the additional options on the dialog window.